Welcome back. This is the fifth part of a series on the HPDN8 microserver. We're finally ready to deploy our Active Directory server. So, in this episode we're installing our Active Directory server. We will be running Windows Server 2012 R2, Standard Edition. And since we're going to use this ISO file a couple of times, we have it on a USB stick inserted to the server. And we're going to copy to our hard drive. A link to the Windows 2012 R2 server evaluation ISO is available in the video description. We have started PowerShell and are currently in the root of our D drive. We're going to start by running the command mkdir to create a new folder called ISO. To find the drive letter of the USB thumb drive, type in the command get volume. And as you can see, we have one removable drive named technut with the letter E. So we're going to navigate to the E drive. I'm going to run the copy item command. I'm going to tab to get the file name. We're going to specify the destination as d colon slash iso slash. The file is now being copied. Once the process is completed, we're going back into the D drive and opening the iso folder. We're going to run dir command and see that the file is now available. We will also go ahead and create two more folders one called VHD and one called VMs. We'll open up Hyper-V Manager and open the Hyper-V settings and specify the newly created folders as the defaults for our VHDs and VM files. Everything is looking good, so close the window by clicking OK. We will now create the virtual switch to allow the virtual machines to connect to the internet. Open the virtual switch manager. We're going to create a new external switch, we're going to give it a name, and we're going to select what interface on the server is used for this connection. To check that, go into the server and in PowerShell run get netadapter. As you can see, that the Broadcom interface without the number 2 is the one that we're using. So we're going to select that. And we're going to allow the management OS to use this network adapter. Click apply. You can see that the network will go down for a bit. We're going to allow that, and we're going to wait some. The virtual switch has now been created, and as you can see, the communication with the server has failed. But if we go in and right click and select refresh, you'll see that the server is back up and running. We are now ready to create the virtual machine. We're going to click New and select Virtual Machine. We're going to click Next. We're going to give the machine a name. And as you can see below, it will be stored in the directory specified. We're going to use the second generation of Hyper-V machines. So we're going to click Next and assign the memory of 1 GB to the server. We're going to select our V switch. We're going to create the new virtual drive with the default settings of 127 gigabytes. And we're going to specify that we will be installing the operating system from our ISO that we copied earlier. We'll click next, and you can see the summary of the server. Once we click finish, the machine will be created. Now it's time to start the virtual machine. We're going to double click it, and we're going to press the power button. Press the prompt to boot from the CD, DVD. And we're going to wait for the boot process. We're going to select our time and currency format as well as our keyboard layout. Click install now. We have a few different options for our Windows Server installation. We have the Standard Edition and the Data Center Edition. We're going to use Standard Edition. We also have to select whether we would like the GUI or the core interface. In this case, we'll be installing the GUI. We're going to accept the license terms. We're going to use the Custom Install option. And select the only drive that we have available. Just as before, the installation is automatic, so you can click the annotation on the screen to skip ahead.
Once the installation has completed, we'll be prompted to select a password for our local administrator account. Can I enter the password? And wait for the settings to finalize, and then we'll be able to sign on. We're going to speed up the video while we wait for the server manager to load. Once the server manager is loaded, we're going to go into local server. Once that is finished loading, we're going to click the computer name and go ahead and change the name of the computer. Just click change and enter the name that you'd like. We will be prompted to restart once we close the window, but we're going to select to restart later. We're going to go ahead and configure remote desktop. As before, we're enabling the less secure option. Click OK and confirm. refresh the settings so that you can see the current ones. We're going to open the network configuration and set a static IP address for the server. We're going to start CMD to look for the current IP address. So we're going to use the same one. Just run ipconfig. Go to the properties and enter the same details. I'm also specifying the Google DNS as my secondary DNS. The new network settings have been detected and we'll click yes. We're going to close the CMD prompt and the network configuration. We're going to scroll the information window to the right. We're going to go ahead and configure the Windows updates. I'm going to click let me choose my settings and specify that you should download the content but don't install it without my permission. The server will start looking for updates, but we're not going to bother with that right now. We now perform the initial configuration, and as the computer name has changed, we're going to go ahead and restart. In the start menu, and click the power button. Select restart. We're going to server wants you to specify why you're restarting, so we're just going to select something from this list to see it's reasonable. Click continue, and the server will restart. The server has restarted and we're ready to sign back in again. I'm going to speed up the video as the server manager loads. So the server manager is about ready. As you can see everything is green now. I would be surprised if we don't get any kind of warnings. This is quite normal as some services take a bit longer to start than usual. We're going to click add roles and features and start the wizard. I'm going to click next and select a role based installation. I'm going to select to install to this server as it's the only one that we can currently manage. We're going to go ahead and select Active Directory Domain Services. We'll be prompted to install some features related to this, so we're going to go ahead and click Add Features. We're going to go ahead and click next. We're not going to add any more features, so we're clicking next again. Can see some information here, and as you can see, if we don't have a DNS available, it will be created once we run the AD domain setup later on. Click Next, and we're ready to start the installation. We'll speed up the installation and wait for it to finish. see that the installation went fine, so we're going to click Promote this server to a domain controller. This will start a new wizard. This is loader, we're going to specify. We're going to add a new forest. It's time to specify the name of the domain. 
In our case, we're using the name technut.local. Click Next. We're going to use the default forest functional level and domain functional level, so nothing will be changed on this page. However, we will be entering a password for recovery purposes. Click Next. As you can see on top of the screen, we're getting a warning message. This warning message is because we don't have a DNS infrastructure in place. It's nothing to worry about as this server will act as a DNS server. Click Next. We can see that the NetBIOS name, Technot, is available, so we're clicking Next again. We will be using the default path for our files, so we're just going to click Next. We'll get a summary of what's going to happen. And if you click the button, View Script, you will see a PowerShell script that will perform the exact same tasks. The prereq check will run and see if everything is OK. As you can see on the bottom, there's a warning saying that the server will be restarted once the installation is completed. We are getting some warnings, but none of these are anything that we have to be concerned about. So, it's time to click install. The installation will start and will speed up the video once again. You can skip ahead by clicking the annotation on the screen. Once the server is rebooted, we have the option to sign in with a domain administrator account. This will use the same password as your local administrator account. Once the server manager is loaded, we're going to go into Tools and open up Active Directory Users and Computers. see our current AD structure. You can see no computers are available, however the domain controller is a member of the domain. You can also see the default user groups. What we're going to do is create a few OUs for users and computers. Start with going to new and selecting organizational unit. We're going to call this one TechNut users. We're also going to create another OU for our computers. So go into new and organizational unit again and type in TechNut computers or whatever you'd like. As you can see, these folders were created with accidental delete protection, so if we try to delete them with the administrator account, we will get access denied. We're gonna create a few users, starting out by creating a user for myself. I'm gonna enter the name, and specify a login name. When we click next, we'll be prompted to specify a password. We're also going to create an additional user account for my co-host and friend, Niklas. These user accounts will be used later on for demo purposes. We are now going to join the hypervisor to the domain. So we're going back to the remote desktop connection, a text message for you, and open up the config page. The first thing that we need to do is specify our domain controller as our DNS server. So we're going to go into option number 8, network settings, and we're going to select our interface. We're going to select option number 2 to set DNS servers, and we're going to enter the IP address of our domain controller. 
I'm gonna set the Google DNS as secondary DNS as I usually do. Go ahead. Go back to the main menu. We're gonna select option number one to join your domain. We're gonna specify D for domain and enter the name of the domain, which is technat.loca. We're gonna choose what account to use and we're gonna use the administrator account. We'll be prompted to enter the password of the domain admin account. Once the domain join is completed, we'll get a prompt asking us if we want to change the computer name. As we've already done that, we're gonna select no. We're gonna restart the server to complete the domain join. This will also restart the domain controller. But if you're using the default settings, it will restart as soon as the server is up. We waited a few minutes and started up the Hyper-V manager. As you can see, the domain controller is up and running again. To verify that the domain join has been successful, we're going to start a remote desktop session to the Hyper-V server. And as you can see on the first row, we're now joined to the technut.local domain. We will now join the client computer to our domain. Go into network settings, change adapter settings, select properties, go down to IPv4 settings. We're going to set the DNS to the server IP of the domain controller. You could set a Google DNS, in this case I didn't. I'm going to go into properties of my computer change the settings. Click change, select domain, and I'll set a new name for the client, as well as enter the technut.local domain. Get a password prompt and we're going to enter the credentials for the domain admin account. We get a prompt saying that we're welcome to the domain, so we say thank you and press OK. So we need to restart the computer. So we're going to close and restart now. We've signed back into the server using my personal account. And if we go into CMD and type who am I, we'll see that I'm in fact logged in with the domain user account. So to wrap things up, we should go into the AD and have a look at it. By now, as the computer is joined to the domain, we should be able to use the DNS name of the server instead of using the IP address to connect. There we go. I'm going to sign in using the administrator account. Back in Active Directory uses the computers. Nothing has changed so far. I'm going to go ahead and run a refresh and open the computer container. As you can see, our newly joined computers are right here. We're going to start by moving the client to our computer's OU. Do this by right clicking and selecting move. The server shouldn't be part of this computer OU, so we're going to create a new OU called Technut Servers. And we're going to move that as well. Computers, we can see our client, and we look in servers, we'll see the Hyper-V server. And that's all for this episode. You now have a fully functioning Active Directory domain running on your server. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. In the next episode, we will be installing our file server.